I think we're increasingly reliant on the technology, both for our record keeping and for analysis of our illness. So your doctor doesn't spend a lot of time looking at you. He takes your blood and your urine and everything else, and it's sent to a lab, and that's how we, we determine your illness. And there are advantages and disadvantages to that. In general, I think the, the technology of the laboratories and the like is wonderful, it's beneficial. We can find diseases faster. Now, whether it's going to work because you've been to seven different doctors and have seven different problems, you know, if you go to a rheumatologist, your problem is going to be with that illness. If you go to a gastroenterologist, it's your stomach. A cardiologist, it's your heart. And so we can't use technology to solve that. That's the disciplinary fights. Um, now, if your question was to me as a sociologist and my research, I started out crunching numbers, doing very fancy statistics. And I quickly learned that that's wonderful and very helpful for many things, but it was far more valuable to combine it with the observations, with the interviews, with uh, shadowing workers and the like, to understand what the numbers said and how to put them in context. And most importantly, what to look at. You know, Max Weber said the choice of what we study is, is the most critical value judgment we start with. And the fact that we have these different manufacturers of different electronic health systems fighting with each other and not cooperating means that it's even harder for us and for our doctors to get that information because it's in different systems that have very different protocols and measures. In the United States I can tell you that each vendor had their own system and each wanted their system to win and they refused to cooperate. Um, in Switzerland I think you have many of the same electronic health system vendors um, who are fighting the same system. But at least in Switzerland, I think you have a better chance of coordinating among the different systems because you have special um, records of individuals and the like. In America, it's more chaotic. So very often you see in these systems that cost hundreds of millions of dollars, the usability of a system from 1998 or something. It, it's insane that, that we don't have more usable systems given the, the importance of the topic and the amount of money we're spending on it. Mm -hmm. So good workarounds should become the next routine. They should be adapted as this makes sense. The problem is that a lot of very foolish managers are afraid of the workarounds that save patient lives and make things work. But a workaround is always a symptom, not of worker failure, but of a system failure that should be fixed. Mm -hmm. And when I talk to hospital CEOs, they say, oh, Professor Coppell, I've read your paper. I'm going to stop workarounds. And I say, if you do that, all of your patients will be dead within hours. The doctors and nurses do workarounds, not because they're evil or lazy, but because they want to keep the patients alive. Mm -hmm. And very stupid managers fail to think about that. They should be investigating the workarounds and understanding why they exist, and then how to make those systems better to respond to that. There's very often what we call cut and paste. So rather than repeat the whole business about the patient, in terms of big data, I think if we can combine the information from these many electronic health records and then analyze that, we have a sample of 300, um, 300 million Americans, of 500 million Europeans that we can look at and we can study them. We can really come up with a, an analysis that will jump medical science decades and we could do that in months because we have all of these data. Instead of a clinical trial 
with you know 20 people taking one drug. We now have everybody's record. So yes, I have great faith in that. In terms of artificial intelligence, um, I think we're getting better and better. We need to feed it good data to start with, which we don't have. But also, we see now already there are artificial intelligence programs that are helping doctors make diagnosis. They're saying, did you also think about this? What about adding this test to see that? That works. It's still a baby, but it's getting there, and we'll have more of that. Mm -hmm. So I do have, I, I'm not a Luddite. I mean, people think that I'm, I'm opposed to it. I love this technology. It will give us so much more, but we have to just not stop and not just bask in our own glory. And now, it's primitive compared to what we can do and should do.